Welcome to the third lecture this week. This is not really a comprehensive course on optics, neither is it a comprehensive module on optics. So, you should think of this as a barely superficial introduction to how waves come into play in optical systems. In particular, we are looking at the limit when wavelength is very small compared to some typical say aperture sizes such that diffraction effects are suppressed. In this limit, we can treat waves like as though they are rays and the whole idea about uh, what we are doing is to trace the path to trace the path of a ray from some point A to point B. So, in the process of going from point A to point B, this ray could be traveling from one medium which is characterized by refractive index mu 1 to another medium which is characterized by refract refractive index mu 2. So, it could get reflected, it could get refracted. So, all these effects are possible. We did use the sign convention last time, but let me specifically talk about it for a minute. So, in general anything to the positive of origin here. So, here origin is O, maybe you have some reflecting surface there or in any case anything to the positive side would be taken as positive length and anything to the negative side is taken as to be taken as negative length. For instance, in the figure that that is shown here, p is that cutoff position, p at the center determines that. So, anything to the left of p is going to be negative, which means that x would take negative sign. On the other hand, y which is on the right side to p will take positive sign. And similarly, when we look at the angles, so here four angles are marked and the signs are also marked there. So, typically angles take the signs of their tangents. We discussed how to obtain the power of a refracting surface. We also looked at how to obtain the power of a plano convex lens. So, we dealt with something like this. In fact, this figure is same as what I showed you in the last class. So, we wanted to know if O is the position of the object on the left side, where should I see the image of O on the right side, given that I have a refracting surface. The most important thing here is that this ray goes from a medium whose refractive index is mu 1 to the medium on the right side whose refractive index is mu 2. So, there is change in medium when it traverses from one side to the other. Before I go ahead, let me flash for you the slide which I had shown in the last class. So, we did obtain this uh, result in the last class which is, which is the formula for power of a refracting surface. This u and v are distances. Notice here that in saying that u carries a negative sign, we have used this sign convention. Now, if I apply the law of refraction to this system, the ray changes goes from one medium to another medium at point S. And I know that incident angle is phi 1, refracting angle is phi 2. So, I can use the law of refraction and write the following equation. So, this is simply the law of refraction. In paraxial approximation, which means that I assume that all these angles are small enough, phi 1 is small, phi 2 is small, in which case mu 1 times phi 1 will be equal to mu 2 times phi 2. To be able to do anything with this formula, I need to know what is phi 1 and phi 2. So, now let me substitute these in the law of refraction is going to give me the following. Now, once again if I apply my sign convention that we just discussed here, alpha 1 would take the negative sign, 
hence I would have mu 1 alpha 1 plus mu 2 alpha 2 is equal to mu 2 minus mu 1 times beta. In the spirit of paraxial approximation, this would imply that beta is equal to h by r because we are stating that tan beta is approximately equal to beta in the limit of small angles. Then if I substitute this in my former equation this one, I am going to get the following. Now this quantity mu 2 minus mu 1 by r simply the power 1 by focal length. So, let me call this p. So, now I would have, so it is a useful way of rewriting what we already knew. So, here is a problem of two refracting surfaces. So, earlier we dealt, dealt with one, now uh, we have two of them and uh, the powers are specified p 1 and p 2 and also we have three different media here, one characterized by mu, refractive index mu, other one which lies in between these two refracting surfaces and that is mu 1 and there is a third one which we shall call mu prime. And as you can see, I assume that there is a ray which is coming really from afar. So, it, it comes as plain wave front parallel to the axis which is drawn in red color. What we shall do is actually apply the this formula that we have got this one at both the points meaning at, at the position of both the refracting surfaces. And ultimately when I want a formula for thin lens what I am going to do is to bring together these two pieces such that the medium mu 1 would not even exist. So, I have these two sets of uh, relations which we can now manipulate. An obvious thing to do is to first set alpha equal to 0 because as you can see we are working with light ray coming from in principle infinite distance which means that p 1 h 1 is equal to mu 1 alpha 1. So, I can substitute here and that is going to give me the from here I can write an expression for alpha prime. Now, to get the power of this combined uh, system, all I need to do is to simply do a small manipulation. So, now let me call this effective power as simply p. So, if I use the effective power which is p and rewrite this relation for alpha prime, so alpha prime would simply become alpha prime is equal to. So, this gives me the effective power of the system of two refracting surfaces. So, this will be the equation that we will now use as I explained earlier to find the power for a thin lens. As we begin to calculate the power of thin lens, here I have the relevant diagram for you. So, I have the lens at the center and I am assuming that a ray of light is coming from in principle infinite distance. So, the angle of incidence alpha is equal to 0, it is getting refracted and as we know it finally converges at a point which we call the focus of the lens and the entire region or you might call the atmosphere, we assume that has that it has a refractive index equal to 1 and the material of the lens has refractive index equal to mu 1. And then I have also assumed a general situation where the radius of curvature of the two sides that make up the two halves that make up the lens are different. What we know is the power of each half of the lens. So, let me indicate by p 1 this particular half of this lens which has radius of curvature r 1. So, in that case it would be, so that would be the power for one half. And similarly, I can write an expression for power 
for the second half. Now, the effective power we already have this formula for effective power. Let me rewrite that. We know what is P 1, we know what is P 2. The formulas are written there. They are the power corresponding to plano convex lens. Now, you should note that as far as this lens is concerned, there is only one h. So, remember that this is put together by squashing these two halves. So, h 1 and h 2 become equal and it is equal to h and of course, h would cancel out completely. This formula of a power can be written in a simpler form. So, just by simple manipulation, I get this final form for the power of a thin lens and we know that this power is inversely is inversely related to the focal length. So, I could call this as some 1 by f prime and as you can see just going one step backward this expression for power is simply nothing but p 1 plus p 2 itself. So, ultimately you come back to the point where we could say that p is equal to p 1 plus p 2 the power of the combination here combination being two halves of the refracting surfaces and that is equal to 1 by f prime. You can go back to ask. So, if I had a plano convex lens would this formula help me give the correct limiting result. Indeed for a plano convex lens of this type r 1 is simply equal to infinity and r 2 is negative by our sign convention. Hence, this gives a positive value for power which means that it is able to converge a light that is coming really from an infinite distance so to speak. In the next module, we will try and generalize this to a method where we can apply it to several such elements. Mm -hmm.